do you feel like you're qualified to serve in this Congress right now? How do you hope your constituents can trust you, even though that you've misrepresented your biography to them? What's your response to calls for a House ethics investigation by Nick George Santos's time in Congress is already off to a rough start. The congressman from New York is not only under investigation at the county, city, and federal level, but now Brazilian authorities are back on his back. Let's talk about expulsion from Congress and extradition to Brazil. Welcome to TYT's Overruled. I'm your legal analyst, Adrian Lawrence. Brazilian authorities announced on Tuesday that they are reviving the criminal fraud charges against George Santos. The 34-year-old newly elected member of Congress has been making headlines lately for fabricating significant aspects of his life, from his education and work experience to his religion and ethnicity. The Brazilian criminal case was suspended for nearly a decade now because authorities were unable to locate Santos, who had fled the country shortly after confessing to the crime in 2008. Now, this was first reported by the New York Times, which provided these deets. Just a month before his 20th birthday, Mr. Santos entered a small clothing store in the Brazilian city of Niteroi outside Rio de Janeiro. He spent nearly $700 using a stolen checkbook and a false name, court's records show. Mr. Santos admitted the fraud to the shop owner in August 2009, writing on Akrut, a popular social media website in Brazil. I know I screwed up, but I want to pay. In 2010, he and his mother told the police that he had stolen the checkbook of a man his mother used to work for and used it to make fraudulent purchases. A judge approved the charge in September 2011 and ordered Mr. Santos to respond to the case. But by October, he was already in the United States and working at Dish Network in College Point, Queens, company records show. Of course, when recently confronted about the charges in Brazil, well, Santos denied them, telling the New York Post that he is not a wanted criminal in the United States or in anywhere else around the world. Now his attorney is saying that he is in the process of engaging local counsel there in Brazil to address the matter. So what happens next? Well, Brazilian courts, they are closed due to the holiday, but they're going to open up toward the end of the week. And when they reopen, prosecutors will file a petition to reopen the charges against him. A judge will issue letters rogatory, which uh, is basically a request to a foreign court for help. And Brazilian's federal justice ministry will go ahead and serve those letters on the U.S. Department of Justice, which should let Santos know. And although Santos cannot be compelled to respond, he must be notified about the case even though the trial can't proceed without him there in Brazil. So what happens if Santos is convicted? Well, he could face up to five years in prison or a fine. But the U.S. won't extradite him, as this is not the type of extraditable offense like rape or murder. And Santos will probably continue to evade imprisonment unless he sets foot in Brazil or in a country that will allow extradition for these fraud charges. But what impact does this have on Congress? Well, ultimately, no impact. Yes, the ethical committee could bring him up on some kind of investigation and charges, but really it's more likely that Santos would be booted out if he got into criminal trouble here in the United States. And given the many ongoing investigations into Santos's past and all the questionable things that are already popping up, there's a good chance, particularly as it concerns his campaign spending, that he may have breached some laws and that he will be called out for it. But then again, his fellow members of Congress would have to hold him accountable. And I'm not quite sure if the simple majority in the House would call him up on impeachment and then to have the Senate, two thirds of it, be willing to boot him out. That's also quite questionable, given that we know how the GOP works. But it's something that definitely could still happen and it would damn sure be a distraction as the GOP tries to take the White House in 2024. I don't know, but you let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Hit that like and follow button, and thanks for watching.